guys, it's Todd and Mark from Like-Minded Lunatics. How you doing, dude? I'm great. How are you? I'm great, man. Welcome back to another drink place where it's all we do around here. I mean, besides just completely lying without any guilt to our teachers as kids, it's all we've ever done around here. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to Like My Lunatics and welcome back to Drink Play Swear. No, man, you know that Like My Lunatics is not only Drink Play Swear. It's also Mark in the Friday night videos, often with the LML crew. Mark, bang, flash something up there for them. And folks, don't forget, bang, to hit that subscribe button to be a part of this family of weirdos. So what is it that we do here at Drink Place Where? Well, it's exactly what it sounds like. We play a game, usually a classic one, pair it with a beverage, often a like lower shelf beverage. And um, we uh, tell stories. Glad to be here with you, dude. Oh, I'm um, so glad to be here. Thank you for having me. We're playing Streets of Rage 4, which I did a couple of years ago on the channel, but uh, this is a, a, a different uh, setting. And of course it's two players, so I thought it would be okay. Uh, this is a boss rush that you only unlock when you beat the game. Yep. So we're going to get into some boss rush action. Uh, and here's the thing, Todd. I, I know that in this boss rush, you get one life. So what I thought would be fun is if I'll put a ticker up at the top okay. and we'll, we'll keep a tally of how many times we die and have to start this dumb thing over. I also haven't played this in maybe over a year, so I don't even remember the buttons. So we, we, we come into these knowing nothing. I'm going in as Blaze, player one. I'm there one dash one. Mark is Axel. Axel. Hyper Mark is player two. Uh, so let's get going, dude. Okay, sounds good. Uh, what are you drinking? While oh, this shit. I always get the, no, I don't want to leave. It's I always get the. It's because you're an Xbox player. I'm an Xbox player and it messes me up. Uh, so for my beverage, as you know, Todd, I've had the Red Deck Redeemer over here doing reactions and he literally comes in with just a case of this nonsense. He doesn't even bother to chill it, which I find weird, but I'm going with a Miller High Life. What do you got? And I got, well, I can't raise it uh, right. Oh, here we go. I got a Lone Star today. Nice. Uh, yeah, so we're going classy, both classy. That's right. right. So what I remember about uh, this first boss is that when she raises her uh, her hand up, she's sort of charging for something terrible, and you just get the hell out of the way. Yeah. Otherwise, you can barrage her a little bit. Um. Oh, she got me with that snake, Todd. Nice. Oh, my God. Oh, get the hell out of there, bro. All right. Oh, no! So today, <laughs> what I wanted to get into in terms of the story was uh, talking about times that we got in trouble as kids. Mostly, um, I'm most interested in stories where you got in trouble with a teacher. Because the okay. funny thing is that uh, Mark and I are both college professors. The high school versions of us would have been shocked to learn that that's what we would choose later Oh, on 100%. Because we hated school. Yes. So if you'd be willing, I'm dead by the way, bro. If you'd be willing- Oh God, damn, I just died too. All if right. If you'd be willing to tell a story about a time you got in trouble with a teacher, I'd love to hear it. I've got two, one's real quick, one's a little bit lengthier. So uh, let's go back to around sixth, maybe seventh grade. We're talking, you know, right before puberty when you're going through changes and you really don't want to reveal anything embarrassing to anybody, especially sure. in my school, because it's just used against you. Sure. Uh, so you're, you're really conscious of your body and just what's happening. And uh, I'm in Mrs. Ash's class, and Miss Ash was a very nice teacher, one of those okay. teachers that genuinely seemed concerned with the kids. It, yeah. That's foreign to me as a teacher myself. Um, <laughs> But she genuinely seemed to care uh, about her students. So we're in English class and she's writing on the board and it's really, really quiet, you know, and uh, everybody's taking notes and I'm taking notes and I drop my pencil, Todd. I drop my pencil. It happens to the best of us. I, I go to pick it up and when I do, when I do, my stomach gets a little impinged and, oh. a, and a tiny fart sneaks out. Now, I did not mean for that to happen. Of course not. And I was, oh, I'm dead. And I was just immediately mortified because I knew, oh my God, I will, I'm gonna be known as Fart Boy from here on out. <laughs> the That's, only kid who ever farted. Yeah, and so I, as soon as it happened, I, I, I know my face just went white. People turned to look at me and Miss Ash spun around and this was, this was so great. Miss Ash spins around, and before anybody can even giggle, up oh, game over again. Nope. Before anybody can even giggle, she she says, "Stop, stop. That's natural. It's an accident. I don't want to hear a peep." And it really made me feel like 
you know, she was there to let, you know, to, to support us and stuff like that. Wow. And so I sat there in my chair and I just, you know, I hunkered down and I farted again as loud as I could. <laughs> And it, and it rattled on the chair, and Miss Ash turned around and screamed at me to get out of her classroom. Uh, and yeah. then I went to the principal's office, and I explained that Miss Ash had told me it was okay to fart, and then she kicked me out of the class. Yeah, she's and, and all of a sudden now she hates you. Yeah, now she hates me because I'm <laughs> taking advantage of the fart rule. Uh, so anyway, that's my first story. What do you got? All right. Uh, yeah, so I'm dead again. So when I was, uh, and you'll notice I'm getting a little better at evading. I can't remember how to eat the food. Do you remember how to eat the food? Because I was trying to eat the food as well. Couldn't eat the food. There's chocolate and onion rings sitting all over the place. And, you know, this is like in uh, uh, Castlevania when you find a turkey leg in the wall and you decide to eat it for some reason. You can't be eating alley food. Can't, well, I mean, I guess if you, if you have been hit in the face, it will help to eat chocolate. If there's a woman who's lashing you in the face with a snake. So, uh, when I was in high school, uh, me and my buddies were uh, dirtbags and I was in trouble. And um, uh, I was in band. I was in marching band and I quite liked it. It was the only class I liked. And uh, we uh, were good enough as a band to uh, t do UIL competition. We were going to go to Breckenridge. Is it Breckenridge or Brackenridge, Colorado? Uh, I think it's Breckenridge. Brackenridge is the hospital in San Antonio. Sure. Okay. So, we we're going there. And we're gonna fly and everything, and it was gonna be the, one of the first times I'd ever seen uh, snow, you know. So very oh, yeah. excited. But uh, right before we go on the trip, a uh, band director calls us in uh, to his office, and he tells he tells his boys, uh, "Now I know for a fact you guys are cigarette smokers." Oh yes. And I don't want any of that on the trip, and I also don't want to be policing that on the trip. Nope. So I need you to sign these, me and my, this is four of us in this room. I need you to sign this promissory note that you're not going to smoke on the trip. Bogus. So, so we all, of course, do it because we want to go. Yep. Um, but we all also leave the office knowing we're definitely smoking. Sure. So uh, we go on the trip, and I remember it was like a long plane ride. And when you're a kid and you're a cigarette smoker, like you got it in your head that like, I'm addicted, man. And like in a romantic way. And like yeah. you, eat, you need a cigarette every 30 seconds. Right. So we're freaking out on the plane. It's been a couple hours since we had a cigarette. So anyway, we finally land and we go sneak off and have a cigarette. And we do that many times over the course of the trip. Oh, of course. Well, we get back to San Antonio and uh, go home for the weekend and everything. And then on Monday morning, uh, Mr. Buley, band director, calls me, just me, uh -oh. back into his office. Yeah. And I think, looking back, he probably called me in because I was the mo most honest, probably, of this group. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so he wanted to get some information. He said, Todd, I'm really disappointed in you guys. Oh, no. That's the worst. I, I had reports. Yep. So there was a narc, right? I had reports that you all smoked on the trip. Uh-oh. Now, I'm thinking over what to do, right? Yep. You have a hard time deciding as a kid what to do. And I, I'm not usually too comfortable with being a liar, to be honest with you. If you have guilt about it, I'm, okay. not great, I'm not great about lying. But in this moment, I thought, you know what? This is a victimless crime, and there's also absolutely no evidence. This is after the fact. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna lie my ass off. You know, it's not like I stole some kid's hacky sack. Right. So I say, I, I look him right in the face. I say, you know what, Mr. Buley? Uh, this upsets me so much. <laughs> you know, I said, I'm a cigarette smoker. That's true. Um, and I'm addicted. But I didn't take cigarettes. I didn't have a single cigarette. And I didn't see anybody have any. Sure. So you you have whatever kind of witch trial you want. Witch trial? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I didn't do anything wrong. And... Uh, and I, of course, I have to accept whatever you decide. But yeah. I, I think this is bullshit to be accused. And he dropped the whole damn thing. He oh, never wow. He never talked to any of the other guys, and he just dropped it. I think he realized it, it didn't make much sense to mess around with that anymore. So I got that's, away with that one. That's amazing. <laughs> All so right, when, I was in, when I was in high school, uh, I, I went to a tiny, tiny high school. I had 10 people in my class. Yeah. And because of that, the school didn't offer any extracurricular or it really any kind of like uh, 
electives. You just yeah. had to take what they had. So I was forced to take ag, ag shop. Didn't want to take ag shop. I grew up on a dairy farm. The last thing I want to do is work with animals at school too. Uh, that that junk. Yeah. Nightmare. Absolute nightmare. Uh, so the ag teacher hated me and hated everybody else in the classroom. Uh, and so we were getting to the to the welding component. Now, my grandfather had worked at the Perry Company in Waco for around 30, 40 years, in a phenomenal metal worker, uh, welder and stuff like that. So that again. anyway, I actually knew how to do that stuff, just didn't want to do an ag. Um, now, I should back up. I do think that what he was justified in hating us for several reasons. One of them was uh, there was one one occasion when he was demonstrating how to weld, and uh, we had we had snuck pepper with us out of the lunchroom. Okay. I don't know if I don't know if you've ever welded before, oh, um, dude. but if you throw pepper onto a weld as somebody's welding, it will ignite the, the pepper kernels and just start sparking. And awesome. so he was trying to demonstrate a, a weld and we chunked that shit on his, on, his, <laughs> on his arc and it just blew up. So, I mean, I get it, he didn't like us. In any case, when we started the welding module, he told us that if you are able, if you can come in and you are able to weld a flat piece of metal on the top of a pipe, upside down, and then when you invert it, if, if it will hold water, if your weld is strong enough that it will hold water, you'll get an A for that module and you won't have to do anything else. Okay. So I was like, this sounds this sounds fantastic. Uh, I, I already know how to weld, but I'm gonna get Papa to help me and, and I'm gonna go in there and not have to work the rest of the semester. Nice. So I told Papa and he was like, that's dead easy. So we started practicing and I was, you know, I got to where I could weld a bead around that pipe and turn it upside down, fill it with water, no leaks. So I show Mr. Choke. He's like, oh, that's great. I'm like, okay, so I don't have to do any work? He's like, no, you still have to do work. So I was immediately upset and mad because, you know, he, he, he reneged on that. I don't there was a that. contract, there was a verbal contract. Verbal contract about what should happen. That's right. So at the end of the module, at the end of the semester, whatever it was, we were doing our, we were doing our practical skills, showing him when he knew how to weld, and we were supposed to do what's called a butt weld. Okay. Butt weld is when you take two pieces of metal and you put a bead in between them and you and you weld them together. Okay. It's pretty easy to do Dead unless easy. you've got old welders like we had, and then you have these huge rods that will burn through the metal. So it, it can be hard. And so to test us, he would have us weld two nails together like that. And so I worked on mine and he was walking around and checking everybody's work and he got to mine and I, I showed him what I welded and I've got it here, Todd. Can you hit pause real quick? Uh, yeah, I, yeah. There we go. When he got to my station, I, I asked Mr. Choate. Now, Mr. Choate, is is this a butt weld or is this a dick weld? And I'd welded two guys with enormous penises with <laughs> one guy sitting on the other guy's penis. I still have it. He gave me a C. What kind of nonsense is that? That's the, probably the the best piece of art that was created all year. Absolute jerk. So those are my two stories. What do you got? Let's go. All right, second grade. No, not second grade. Spanish two, 10th grade. Um, I, you know, I'm, I'm full on uh, asshole kid by this point, 10th grade. Prime asshole. And uh, I'm taking Spanish two. I don't want to be there because I'm no. just not immediately good at it. Uh, you know, in, in, in some work like English and history and, you know, uh, stuff like that, immediately good. And so didn't have to try. But anything I had to try in, like math in a foreign language, I wasn't good because I just didn't bother. Right. So I wasn't good in Spanish 1, but I got through it. And here I am in Spanish 2 on the first day with a new teacher. And she wants to go around and talk to each kid on, no. this, on this first day, have uh, us come up to her desk and just talk to her about our history with the Spanish language. Because sure. some kids had tested out of one, and some kids kind of already spoke, you know, the language, and some kids just went through Spanish one and weren't so great yet, which is me. And but I thought this is bullshit because she even said we might not get to everybody today. Uh, and my last name starts with W, so what I so know you're not getting God. So what that means is I'm just sitting there. So I do the dickhead teenage thing. I pull out my Jan Sport as a pillow, and I take myself a nap. Good for you. Waiting to hear if I'm gonna get the attention of this teacher today. Wake up to the bell ringing. 
and um, have find out I've missed uh, her summoning me to the desk. Oh my gosh! And um, I, I look I look up and the girl next to me kind of giggles when I raise my head, and I say, "Oh, did she call me?" And she goes, "Yeah." I'm like, "Oh no!" And uh, oh no! <laughs> I go, "Did she say something?" She goes, "Yeah, she sort of made a joke about you." And I was like, <laughs> "She made a joke!" And I was like, "Oh no!" <laughs> so I go up to the teacher right after, and uh, wow, we get, we we did good on that one. God, and, I did. And I said, uh, and I said, uh, boy, I'm real sorry about that. You know, trying to like fix things. First impressions, right? Uh. She says to me, no, 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 no. You didn't have time for me. I don't have time for you. <laughs> and bitch hated me the whole year. <laughs> Come to find out, years later, I would I would go through college, go through grad school, and before I had a job uh, as, as a professor, I was trying to get you know any kind of work I could to pay the bills, and I was substitute teaching at different schools. I applied to substitute teach at my old high school, and I was in there filling out the paperwork. This old lady comes in 20 years later. I can tell it's her. She comes in, she sees me in the attendance office, and she just looks at me, and she goes, she recognized me. She goes, <laughs> and walks away beautiful <laughs> yeah and I, I you know I, of course i have my own narrative about how she was awful but i hear from so many students that she was their favorite teacher so oh my god it was probably me all right dude i think all right we, i think we ran out of time here yeah um, but, uh, and I, you know what dude oh this is gonna be a hard one because i haven't done much work on this Folks, in between now and the next time we talk to you, thanks for being with us for Streets of Rage. Just a horrible showing. Terrible, embarrassing. But, dude, it's always good to hang out with you yep. and tell stories. So, in between now and the next time we see you, we're Mark and Todd. RR would be proud. See ya. <laughs> <laughs>